Seriously, is that hot? Oh, that's still stupid hot. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Woo! Hey, everybody, it's your favorite tactical daddy. <laughs> Nicholas Rogers with the big timber log. <laughs> Coming back at you with an update on the ultimate shit hits the fan rifle build. So let's get into this. This portion of the video is going to be for my ADHD viewers that have an attention span of about this long. I'm going to do a quick tip to tail covering the three major items I put onto the rifle to let you know if I think you should or shouldn't make the purchase. Coltac suppressor cover, should. Superlative arms, retro piston kit with the adjustable gas block, should. Law tactical folder, should. Oh, you decided to stick around and hear my explanations. Appreciate that. So let's go ahead and get started with the law tactical folder. Now, I put this on my rifle because I wanted this rifle to be able to get as compact as possible, and it's a pretty simplistic device that's just a hinge from the rear of the upper receiver to the buttstock. Now, it's more than just a hinge. If you take a look here, you'll notice that is an extension coming out the rear of the bolt out of the back of the upper receiver. That extension is necessary for use when using the Law Tactical Folder because the Law Tactical Folder will increase the gap from the rear of the upper receiver to the buffer by about that much. And you don't want to have that bolt flying backwards without having constant contact with the buffer. It can cause catastrophic failure and you don't want that right next to your face, trust me. Now, it's not for everybody. Unless you plan on folding your rifle up and putting it into, let's say, a backpack so people don't know that you have a rifle, I would not recommend it. Just being honest. All right, so up next, the Superlative Arms Retro Piston Kit. Now, this is a pretty neat piece of tech that I put onto my rifle. What it does is it replaces the gas impingement system with an actual piston system. Meaning, as the bullet travels down the barrel with gases, the gases go up through the adjustable gas block, and then it pushes a piston rod back into the upper receiver, driving the bolt rearward. Now, this is a custom bolt from Superlative Arms that you have to use with this kit. Now, it's also not a bufferless system, meaning I still have a buffer tube with a buffer spring and a buffer inside of the buttstock. So I can't use my Law Tactical Folder and then fold the buttstock beside the rifle and still make the rifle operational. You have to have the buffer system working with this retro piston kit. Just be aware of that. It's not like an MCX spear kit. The claims on this is that it's going to greatly reduce the amount of overgassing you're going to get back into the upper receiver because you're eliminating the gas impingement tube so there's no gases traveling rearward to actually drive the bolt that's being done by a piston. At first, when I took this to the range on the first outing, I was not that impressed. Why? Well, it had nothing to do with the actual retro piston kit. It had to do with the fact that I'm using a traditional style suppressor, a Dead Air Sierra 5. This can is a dedicated 5.56 can and it is extremely tight for those bullets to go through. And it does a phenomenal job at capturing those gases and reducing the audible noise. But because of that, it's trapping so many gases, there's just so much back pressure, you're actually getting a lot of gases still traveling rearward through the barrel, out of the chamber, back into your upper receiver, and there's nothing that the retro piston kit can do about that. Now, if you were to run this unsuppressed, which I did, I had almost zero gases, and I was indoor range, and I had zero gases noticeable in my face unsuppressed. If you were to get, let's say, a flow-through suppressor as well, you would have that same experience. And that was such a joy. Now, another thing they claim to do is say that it makes the shooting experience more enjoyable. Well, it actually did. I noticed that having more of a sharp kick with the rifle, it was more of a dull thud into the shoulder, and especially once I started to get the rifle tuned properly, this thing was shooting extremely flat, extremely fast, and it was much more enjoyable than it was without it. One of the benefits of having an adjustable gas block, I would definitely say. One of the things that I ran into that it was claimed that this could do is that you could have a setting with the adjustable gas block, 
that would allow you to be able to shoot this rifle suppressed and also unsuppressed. Well, that didn't really work out that well for me. I did find that setting, but as you'll see in this video, when I found that setting, my unsuppressed pattern was coming back at a five o'clock angle, and my suppressed pattern was coming at that two to one o'clock angle, and there was even a shell that actually bounced off the back of my Trigicon RMR. So after talking with the customer service at Superlative Arms, which is fantastic, hey Mark, and also hey Mr. Russo, he's the owner, they both had a conversation with me, they helped me figure out what I can do with this rifle to make it the best shooting experience possible. So they wanted to know exactly what am I trying to do with this rifle? Well, this is my shit hits the fan rifle, and so therefore I'm going to have this as a dedicated suppressor on this rifle. So Mr. Russo said, you need to have this rifle tuned then for the suppressor, right? Now, another thing is, is he watched some of the videos that I'd sent them before I made this video, and he said, hey, this rifle is extremely overgassed with this suppressor, so you're probably gonna increase the buffer weight. So I went from a carbine or an H weight buffer up to an H2 weight buffer. So before I did all this remodeling on the rifle, I did have the heavier Odin Works adjustable buffer, which worked perfectly because I could change the weights inside of that and I set it to an H2 weight buffer. So then I took it back to the range and I did what they told me to do with the adjustable gas block, which is put it in the wide open setting, which is essentially saying, hey, I don't have an adjustable gas block on here. And then I was going to work my way into the bleed off mode of this adjustable gas block. So you can either go to denial, which is going to restrict the amount of gases that can go up into the gas block, or you can go into bleed off, which bleed off is actually better for the equipment because what it does is it allows all the gases to come up, but it only allows a certain amount of gases to push the piston rearward, and then the extra gases are actually expelled forwards out the front of the gas block. It's actually much better for your equipment. So I worked my way through the bleed off setting and I ended up going to, I think it was 20 clicks. All right, there's four clicks in each rotation. So that was five full rotations into the bleed off mode. And then I got the suppressed rifle to shoot perfectly. Have a look at this. So as you saw there, that is ejecting at darn near a perfect three o'clock pattern. Some of the shells went a little bit towards 2.30 and some of them went towards 3.30, but on average, we are shooting perfectly three o'clock pattern with this rifle, with the ammunition that I need. I decided to see if I could actually take the suppressor off the rifle and have it run unsuppressed. Well, unfortunately, this is what happened. I ended up saying, all right, how much adjustments do I need to walk it back in towards the wide open setting from the bleed off setting that I've been working in with the suppressed tune? And it ended up taking me 12 clicks going back in. So that was three full rotations going back in towards the wide open setting to actually create more gas pressure in my rifle in order to cycle the bolt correctly, load a fresh round into the chamber, and also lock the bolt back when the magazine was empty. After I did that, I did an assessment of the rifle to see what its ejection patterns were going to be doing. And 
Turns out, with it unsuppressed but working correctly, I was I was close to a five o'clock ejection pattern, which to me is a little too under gas because if I get a light load, I'm not going to get the bolt to cycle correctly. And then when I put the suppressor back on, I was ejecting at a near one to two o'clock ejection pattern, and you saw that the shell casing actually bounced off the back of this Trigicon RMR. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to put my gear in jeopardy, right? All it takes is one hard shell casing to hit the back of this glass, and I could really damage my, my Trigicon. That's not worth it to me. So after talking with Mr. Russo, he said, you know, tune the rifle for the suppressor, and then I will carry the Allen key because it's very easy. The adjustable gas block is in here. All you do is put a long Allen key through the top here, and then you rotate it. The clicks are very audible and tactile. And so if I'm running this at 20 clicks out, suppressed, and if something happens to my suppressor and I need to take it off, let's say it explodes because it is a Sierra 5, I could take it off and then just know I need to walk it back in. I'm going to go in more than 12 clicks. I'm going to go into probably about 15 clicks and then be only five clicks out from wide open. But that's very easy to do. I mean, that's, that's simple math. You can do that in less than 30 seconds. So that's not a major inconvenience for me because... I will just put the Allen key in my kit if I have to bug out. Last but not least, the Coltac suppressor cover. Mm -mm -mm. First outing with this, I didn't love it. And the reason why I didn't love it was because after I did two 30 round mag dumps, I got this thing smoking hot. I mean, smoking hot. Have a look. See, is that hot? Oh, that's still stupid hot. That suppressor cover is, yeah, you don't want to touch that. <laughs> Woo! As you saw, literally, it was smoking hot. And I mean, that was like touching the inside of an oven, right? Like an oven rack. Did not want to touch that thing. <laughs> um, and I wasn't that impressed, honestly. But when I went back a couple days later to actually do what Mr. Russo and Mark from Superlative Arms recommended with the retro piston kit to make adjusting the gas block easier, I didn't put the Coltac suppressor cover on the suppressor because it allows the Allen key to slide in there a little bit easier, right? A little more convenience. And I also wanted to see, is it going to get a lot hotter? Well, all I was shooting was five round shots and not rather quickly, and after a couple of magazines, this suppressor got so hot, uncovered, I could barely touch it. So I said, screw the convenience. And I put the cover back on to the suppressor. And I shot the rest of the day with this. And what I ended up finding was, is I could shoot a mag, grab the suppressor, take it off, and then make the adjustments and then put it right back on. And it was so much easier. And my suppressor never got hot enough that I couldn't touch it. So I have to say that I'm actually very impressed with the Coltac suppressor cover. And another thing that kind of blew me away because a lot of people were telling me, hey, dude, you don't want to get this custom made where it's not going to cover all the way over the chemo mount because it's going to slide on or off the suppressor because it's not cinched up back here. Well, turns out with the Dead Air Sierra 5, it has a lot of gnarling on the suppressor, which is great for this cover. It gives it something to grab onto. And not once in both of my outings did the suppressor ever slide forwards or backwards. And the great thing about it is because it's not covering the chemo mount, because the chemo mount stays stationary, but this portion of the suppressor rotates, I can still articulate this while the cover's on and take the suppressor on and off. So if you're thinking about getting one of the Coltac suppressor covers, which I highly recommend because they make them in custom lengths, make it like mine. As long as you have a suppressor that has gnarling on the outside. I think where people are having issues is when they have smooth body suppressors and that just allows the cover to slide on and off. So something to think about. Now, another thing that I did notice is it did help with the heat mirage being seen coming through my rifle scope after I lit it up. I hope me spending money with my experience with this rifle allows you to decide on whether or not you want to do things with your own gear. 
Now, I highly recommend that if you are going to use a platform like this inside of a house or a building, for the love of God, get it suppressed. Because after a couple of rounds indoors without it being suppressed and you don't have hearing protection on, welcome to the world of tinnitus. All right, so until next time, everybody, make sure to like the video, subscribe, turn on notifications, and leave a comment if maybe you learned something or you want to give me a tip or a trick. So until next time, peace.